Okay, hi guys. Just uh, obviously coming up to five o'clock, so I'm going to sign off soon. So just a quick recap of things, and uh, I guess in respect to some of the price movement that we've had throughout the the course of this week, today's actually been uh, a little bit more subdued. That's not to say there hasn't been some market movement. Obviously, uh, equity markets, US, just looking to finish off the week on the front foot. I can see here the S and P center right still tracking up at these. Uh, elevated levels when we start looking over the course of the last uh, couple of days to define the entire week and, and really this upward trend has just continued uh, we had of course Donald Trump headlining the Davos speeches today um, and Trump putting his nationalist spin on globalism at Davos uh, one thing I mean I haven't been at my desk the last couple of hours but when he was delivering that speech there was a pretty muted market reaction uh, I guess if anything you would say uh, he didn't he didn't say anything too inflammatory which is actually fairly unusual of course for for Donald Trump uh, and so it didn't have too much of a ramification on on direct market prices but obviously one of the key things for this week definitely has been the dollar uh, and certainly when you start looking at euro dollar over the course of really two phases the most recent one is this week which is this uh, and then the other move that we had uh, kind of mid january then really this latter phase has come after of course the u.s administration kind of led by the treasury secretary stephen mnuchin has been talking uh, the dollar down uh, and then this ongoing kind of spat if you like of potential trade talks uh, and then the u.s kind of I guess uh, I was going to say covertly, but maybe not so cov covertly looking to weaken the dollar in order to become more competitive to then kind of leverage the argument and negotiation on the trade side and so on and so forth. So dollar weakness was really the big thing of the week. Uh, and a di Dixie, the dollar index down at a three year low, that in combination, of course, with what we had yesterday, where if I just highlight that kind of initial highest price point in the euro dollar currency pair kind of just shy of 126 of course came from not really what you'd call a hawkish ECB but just not dovish and a lot of people were thinking that with euro dollar of course we start looking at this on a weekly chart you know the last time we were up at these levels you've got to go all the way back to kind of the back end of 2014 and you know, are the ECB starting to sweat with the euro dollar pair up at these kind of elevated multi-year high levels? And what we heard from Draghi was really, he just kept the same line. Uh, and as such, he didn't talk down the euro. And, and obviously we saw that really big move um, during the conference yesterday. Then it reversed because Donald Trump started talking up the dollar, which was the opposite of his kind of his administrative team have been saying we were fully reversed and then we've come back again and here we are you know, kind of sitting around the pivot. So uh, a dollar weakness theme definitely has been the, the big factor which really defined a lot of the price action for the week. And if you start looking at cable, uh, that's clearly evident as well, having, having leapfrogged that psychological 140 handle on those previous pre-referendum low points, we've just catapulted higher really quite quickly. Uh, to a 143.33 handle, which looking at some support in the kind of May time of, again, pre-referendum in 2016. And so really not so much a, a pound story, more a dollar story. Uh, whereas at least with the ECB, there is a fundamental argument that, you know, things are starting to pick up pace furthermore from an economic perspective in Europe. And then a hawkishness or a lack of dovishness from the ECB kind of uh, divergence then against the, the kind of talking down of the dollar by Trump and his team. Other things more specifically for today that we've had, uh, of course you had UK GDP for the fourth quarter and that did come in a touch higher than expected, 0.5 and 1.5%. Uh, one thing though is when you pick through the, the kind of bones of the report, they're still fairly pessimistic about what the future holds with the uncertainty around Brexit. We've obviously heard from Mark Carney, the Bank of England governor. He also spoke at Davos just a short while ago, and he said uh, Bank of England rates heavily dependent on Brexit negotiations with the EU. And I think one of the important things here is that the kind of Brexit talk, although it's still there, is kind of a lower down the pecking order of market 
drivers because actually the next kind of key hurdle for those negotiations to cross doesn't come until the back end of March and that's still several weeks away so for the near term this is really still a, a market being led by Trump and at the moment defined by that weaker dollar which has been the, the more prevalent theme coming out of the US though we did have some other things that certainly were interesting we had the US GDP figure for fourth quarter and that actually came in much weaker than anticipated 2.6 percent against three percent expectations quarter and quarter for Q4 and you can see here that is a drop-off from what we've posted in the previous two quarters in the US which had been in excess of three percent now the market didn't actually react too aggressively to that number there was certainly a knee-jerk reaction but what was kind of saving from the negativity from the GDP was the fact that durable goods orders was much higher than expected 2.9 percent against 0.8 percent month on month so that kind of uh, neutralized the negativity from the growth number in that respect uh, a few other things uh, just going to bring up this document here let me show you because this was a comment we've had from if I bring into into my charts here dolly yen because there was a comment alongside Mark Carney was the Bank of Japan uh, governor Kuroda and what we've seen here as you can see is quite a big downtick in in dollar yen breaching that previous day's low so this is indicative of yen strength and we're targeting a 108 handle now uh, in dollar yen uh, and obviously you start looking at dollar yen on a kind of monthly chart you know this is quite a key support level for for dollar yen around here because you've got to go back to we're looking at November kind of Trump time if you like of when uh, dollar yen moved higher and we're at the lower bound of what has been the kind of the trading range since uh, I guess Q2 of 2017 where we are at the moment but what caused this brief bout of yen strength well the comment from Kuroda he said if I just bring it up Bank of Japan's Kuroda says we are finally close to the target and that inflationary expectations are picking up slightly so obviously in the very short term this equated to immediate yen strength here's the comment and the prevailing move thereafter and how did this look like from a, a trade point of view well this is one of the, the trades of which one of the live guys shared in the chat room earlier uh, this is looking at fairly tight time frames on a minute uh, but you can see here where uh, the price had broken you can see here we had the initial yen strength so dollar yen moving lower it hit the s1 on the daily pivots bounced when it then broke that s1 on the second test it came back up and that was the entry point then for the short and then scaling out of that position you can see one two three four times uh, so a really nice trade there in terms of on the back of that news driven event um, one of the other trades here um, looking at euro dollar and obviously this is again like we've just kind of recapped this seesaw price movement the the lack of dovish tones in the ecb euro dollar rallied so what uh, this specific trader was looking at here is the the fib retracement from the ecb spike high all the way down to the trump comment um, that we had last night low and then he's using the fib retracements for entry points as well as technical points of resistance so you can see here if I can make it maybe a little bit bigger to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see uh, just blow this up a little bit so you can see here this point of resistance which looks like it was also um, around the, the daily pivot hit it here again third time fourth time and then the fifth time on the break he's entered long he's then scaled out of the position at the 50 percent on the approach of that retracement of the entire move from yesterday's high to the overnight low he's then come out of some of the position the price has then gone up to the next fib level come out of one when the price has retraced gone in again and again booking some on the way to the eventual 76.4 fib coming back out and then so on and so forth so a good kind of um, 
technical trade in, in terms of executed well on the points of entry and then you can see here the strategy of which he's looking at in order to get out and scale out of that trade booking it as it progresses and even looking to re-enter on pullbacks down to those again levels of which he initially scaled out of the position uh, so yeah hopefully uh, you find those those useful to see in, in practical terms Okay, going to leave it at that because I understand it's Friday. It's gone five. I'm sure you guys want to hit the pub and so on and so forth and uh, enjoy your weekends. So uh, that's it from me. Uh, and that's it from him. I'm not sure if they can see him. So let me just... There you go. Okay, guys. Have a good weekend. I'll see you Monday. Take care.